Ready? Yeah. Yeah. You ready? So the solid. Yeah. So is that something solid? Well, good this something. Is, this is the same thing. Same yeah. It's just not a well, yeah. One feels that, but then, then you know, you could. There's touch to it, but then there's no solidity still. So, <laughs> what else would you like to talk about? Any suggestions from the audience? <laughs> Any questions from the audience? Our big audience too. I think you should. Uh, take well, you, you mentioned. So my, my, my big guy there? Yeah, the, the one of the sadakas in the audience. If you can, if that's, you can, that's it. He's not saying much. Yeah. If you, can, you can't see his eyes usually. Yeah, no, he's, he's pretty dark. You can't see him under there. My little chocolate boy. <laughs> hey, Raj, look this way. Yeah, now you can see him. We got a good shot of him. So he's in the audience too, but he's not asking any questions. No, he's just taking it all in. He's smart. <laughs> uh, you mentioned sexual desires with the enlightened, so maybe, you know. That was interesting because it seems like uh, even not being enlightened here, the sexual desires are, have gone away. So it would be hard to picture how that would remain after enlightenment. The same way that physical hunger remains, exactly the same way. No difference. The urge to sleep remains, the sometimes dreaming will remain, the waking state remains intact. The waking state and the world of forms do not dissolve into desireless emptiness. So some people might have a parabda toward a sexual life of sexual existence. Others and might for some go into deep away. celibacy. It yeah, might go, it, exactly. There's no way to predict or even expect such a thing. And some fall away. The most important thing is That's that you, you're not playing games anymore. No. It's not because no. you think you don't want to be celibate so that you look good yeah. and can say it you know, if you're celibate, it's just who you are at that point. And certainly the only reason we have to even give an answer like this is because we have been browbeaten with the notion that sex is dirty so that now I have to now give an explanation as to why it's permissible after enlightenment. So the assumptions that are underlying relative existence are what I call voodoo, religious mm -hmm. voodoo, and cheap philosophical kind of understandings that are not gratuitous, they are not open-hearted toward all of human experience. Certainly, if this body-mind is, and it does come equipped with sexual desire and function, there can be no fault in it from the very beginning. In fact, I don't know how else I could have gotten here. Maybe Swamiji has a comment on this. Yeah, for some it falls away, and for some, you know, we have some that are realized, and they're still in marriages, and that goes on, and, you know, and that's fine. It is what it is. It is what it is. You know, for on, on this path, we have two ways of going. There are the ones that are celibate, and there are the ones that are not. And uh, I give two di different uh, practices for those that are celibate versus those that are not. That's all. Yeah. And that's it's, common in It's personal, personal choice. Yes. Personal choice. That's all. And what's right, I, someone came to me last week and they said that sex is really a liability for them. So I said, you know, if you're having that perception, maybe sex can destroy a life like yours. Mm -hmm. So back off. Yeah, so, the, so don't do it. Don't do it. It's and other people simple. will get destroyed if they don't have sex. They get consumed with fantasy, endless fantasizing and being drawn into their subjectivity through the resistance of that, so just find a damn relationship and enjoy it. Don't make a big fuss about it. It's, I mean, that's not going to be the maker or the breaker in realization. If there's anything that's going to be the deal breaker, it's playing games and lack of sincerity, lack of genuineness, lack of self-love for who you are, and giving that over into your practice. Mm -hmm. If practice is necessary, there may right. be some people for whom practice is not necessary. I don't presume to know who might be beneficial of practices. I always put the burden on the student and say, look, it's your life. Mm -hmm. I'll facilitate. I will help. I'll be there. I'll sit in this with you. But please, you make your decisions and live through their consequences. That way you learn. Well, exactly. Everyone has to live through the consequences of their actions. That's why people would come to me and they'll ask me, what should I see? They don't ask me what to do. You have to live with the outcome of your actions. I don't have to live with it. Why are you asking you me might. for You might. Oh, yeah, well, if it's, you know, yeah. If you give well, the advice. Well, yeah, that's why I don't give the <laughs> advice. <laughs> it's not my problem. <laughs> don't ask. <laughs> yeah, you have to live with the consequences of your actions. 
So. So is there any hope for the human race? That's what I would like well, to ask Well, there's always you. hope. <laughs> Not Obama-style hope. I'm talking about real hope. <laughs> there's always hope. There's always hope. One has free will. They can change their direction. That's all. So many are just wrapped up in their drama, though. They don't want to change their direction. They want all the world to change their direction, you know? So what can one do? All we can do is just to continue to give out what we can give out. You know, and hopefully mankind uh, sees that the way they've been doing it is just bringing more suffering. And so hopefully they start turning things around. Yeah. But there's always hope. Yeah. What kind of society would you see?